everyone, it's Paige Nestor with Creek House Honey Farm and today we're going to take you guys on a virtual bee tour. Um, we're hopefully going to see everything you would need to know about the honeybee in the hive and here we go. And so we're going to start off um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm using. This is called a smoker and the smoker is a great tool. You almost have to have one if you're a beekeeper. Uh, what the smoke does for the bees is it it's kind of mean it makes them think that their house is on fire so what would you do if your house is on fire you would probably maybe grab your little sister and maybe your phone or your computer and you would get out so what they're doing is they're packing up the most important thing that they have which is their honey and they're leaving or they're planning to leave so we smoke them just a little bit to make them want to engorge that honey and when they do that it makes them feel like after you know uh, you eat at Thanksgiving like a Thanksgiving dinner or meal and you're a little bit lethargic that's how the bees feel they feel a little bit woozy and so they leave the beekeeper alone the other thing that smoking does is it uh, masks the alarm pheromone that they put out they put out a pheromone that smells like a fruit and it's a banana and so we always tell beekeepers don't ever go and tend your hive if you've had a banana. Uh, we did have a friend that peeled a banana one time and got stung multiple times before he could get to his hive. So it really is a thing. But we're gonna mask that pheromone and then we're also going to make him engorge some honey. So to do smoke, we use a little bit of pine needles. Uh, if you live in the south, uh, you're gonna have a lot of pine needles. We don't up here and the panhandle because we kind of live in an arid desert climate. We also use cotton burrs. We do have a lot of cotton uh, in these parts. And so, and then a torch. We're gonna use a good torch to light that. I don't wanna wait forever on a match or a lighter. So we're gonna torch this fuel. And we wanna be really careful. It's really green out here right now because we've had a lot of rain but we really don't want to set a pasture on fire. And so at Creek House Honey Farm, we try to be really careful about that. Um, so if it's ever really dry out here, we usually light our smoker where it's more protected and it won't uh, catch anything on fire, but today we're good. So this is one of our beehives at the farm. As you can see, it's two deep or brood boxes and it has a feeder on the top. At the entrance of the hive, there are guard bees, and they are watching to make sure that only their family of bees is coming in and out. Foragers go out to collect pollen and nectar, and they bring it back to the hive and pass it off to other bees. The guard bees are just checking to make sure that they belong. Honey bees are one of the worst predators on other hives. We also have predators like mice, raccoons, skunks, and humans. So the guard bees are there to protect. This hive has a top feeder that's protected by a telescoping top. It is a piece of styrofoam that holds sugar water. And it's very useful in the winter time so that we don't have to get all the way into a beehive to feed them. After I've removed the top feeder, now it's time to check the hive. I'm going to start checking the hive by using my hive tool. I have to break apart the frames carefully without disturbing the bees. The bees are in the middle. They are balled up right now because it's still cold and they vibrate to keep the queen warm. The beehive is always kept at about 90 to 95 degrees. I don't want to disturb their cluster too much, so I'm going to start from the outside and work my way in. 
The outside frames are usually empty because they're like a bee's hallway. And we're not ever worried that they don't have bees on them. I'm going to remove the outside frame and lay it on the ground carefully, not to disturb any of the bees on it. If the frame doesn't have bees, I don't have to worry too much. And then I'm gonna start pulling frames toward myself and picking them up on the edges carefully. The outside frames of bees usually aren't as full as the ones that are in the middle. As you can see, this frame does not have a lot of bees. It has a lot of dark honeycomb, and that just means that there were once babies in it. So these bees that are on the outside are probably foragers putting nectar into those empty cells. The next frame that I'm going to pull out definitely has more bees on it. It is also a nectar frame, and so most of the bees on this frame are going to be forager bees that have brought that nectar into the hive. There are definitely more population of bees on this frame, but this is not a brood or baby frame. When bees bring nectar into the hive, they regurgitate it into other bees' mouths and into the comb. It's like telephone with nectar. So the nectar here has been spit into the comb and then the bees are going to fan it to start turning it into thick honey. The way we know that the honey's ready is it becomes capped and this is a frame that has white capped honey. Pollen is the source of protein for the bees. Pollen is fed mainly to young larvae in a source called bee bread. Bee bread is made of a lot of pollen and a little bit of nectar and fed to the babies. Brood okay, so this is a great frame of brood or babies, and it's all capped, and it looks fabulous. It's she, the queen, it has a great brood pattern. That means there's not a lot of holes in it. She's not skipping a lot of cells, and the brood here at the bottom is drone brood, and you can definitely see. Oh, that was a bee. Definitely see that it's more like a popcorn or like kick cereal shape. Um, those drones are bigger than the worker girls. So bees store nectar and pollen around the brood nest in a horseshoe shape. And that's what I'm showing you here in this video. The brood nest is in the middle. You can see where the brown brood cappings are. And then around it is easily accessible nectar and pollen or bee bread. Most of these bees have pollen on their pollen baskets carrying it in to make the bee bread. They feed the bee bread to larvae. These are larvae that are C-shaped in the comb. Okay guys, this is a drone. He's a new drone, we know, because they've just started hatching, because it's just now getting to be spring. Um, they're kind of, well they are bigger, definitely bigger. They have fuzzy bottoms and they have big eyes. And they are bigger than the girls. Thank you.
This is a frame with a lot of new eggs. And I can see them. I'll try to show you a picture of them, but an egg is just, it just looks like a little bitty piece of rice down in the very center of the cell. The queen has a very long abdomen, so her uh, bottom can reach the very bottom of the cell where it's supposed to go. On this frame, there's a queen. You can see sort of a green dot where we marked her from last year. And the bees don't usually like us doing that, so they've probably tried to clean her up and clean it off. She is definitely bigger than the worker bees. And she moves around the frame and they help her. They feed her, they even carry out her poop, and they make sure that she's laying in empty cells and good cells that are cleaned out and ready to go for new brood. So this is a queen cell and that's not a, I mean, it's a, it's a normal thing because these girls are, they're getting ready to swarm. Um, not a great thing because I can't get queens yet. These are queen cells in the middle of this frame. They are peanut shaped. The queen is a much bigger female bee than the workers because she is a fertilized bee. She carries all of, all of the sperm and eggs that she will ever use in her entire lifetime, and that is why her abdomen is so big. This is a queen cell with royal jelly and a larva floating on top. Royal jelly is a secretion from the bee's glands, and they basically spit it into the cell, and the larva floats on top and eats that royal jelly um, most New bees start off on a pool of royal jelly and eat it for about two to three days. Then the bees stop that and they start giving them bee bread. Queens, however, eat royal jelly their entire lifetime and this is what turns them into a queen.